in June, John Luke flew from England. I flew from Ohio, and we met in Washington, D.C. We hooked up with John Warner. Here I am, five minutes getting off the plane, having coffee on the balcony. We were fast friends right away. We had to hang out at Warner's D.C. place and uh, got to experience the other side of D.C. that people don't really get to see. John showing us about telluric energy here in a sculpture while we're having lunch. And we got like a private tour of Washington, D.C. It was amazing. First stop, obviously, was the Scottish Rite Building where we got to see all of the hidden symbology. John beat on the door. They wouldn't let me in. <laughs> it was a great time. We got to wander around the city, and basically John showed us all the nooks and crannies that most people don't get to see because he's lived there his entire life. We had an amazing time checking out all of the sites. Uh, John Luke beat me there by a day. The Washington Cathedral, we got to go in there and just check out the amazing architecture. Brother George Washington in the corner, of course, and all the other hidden symbologies. And I couldn't believe that a president was laying buried in the middle of a church. And uh, I jumped the barrier and took the picture. Uh, I didn't get kicked out. We had a great time. These two guys are my friends. You know, meeting people on the internet and seeing them in the flesh and blood are two different things. And it was amazing to be able to hang out with these two guys and share a week together. We jumped in John's car and we headed to the farm in Virginia. I haven't taken any video, so here. No press. Good day. Oh, yeah. Good day. Good press. Good day. We may or may not be somewhere Gosh, right now. It's an amazing day. It is beautiful. Just... All right. Ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> Don't go that don't way. It's going to block the road. Oh, they're going to kill me, bitch. Yeah, it'll knock down. It'll knock over a fence. Oh, and... God, yes. God, he's back. Uh, Bloody hell, that's fucking karma right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, you're all right. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's almost perfect. It hasn't. Everyone's got four old drugs. Well, this is the <laughs> barn that I literally grew up in. Wow. Warner's farm is amazing. He was so gracious and kind the entire time. We had a blast. This was definitely God's country. We got to see things that most people don't get to see, and most of all, cars. I'm a car dude. There's no denying it. John Luke was in for a hell of a learning curve because he likes cars but has no idea what we were talking about. Most of the time, it sounded like we were speaking a foreign language when we were talking about <laughs> specifics of hot rods and cars, but we had a great time, and Warner was so kind in showing us his whole entire collection. He also got to see a bunch of amazing world-class builders and restorers all throughout the area that are working on cars for everybody all over the world. We got to jump in. We got to ride along in the beautiful countryside. And hell, we even got to drive a few of them. It was so fun. And like I said, I was in car guy heaven when I was there. It's actually pretty fast. It has the GM Hydromatic which was the best in the world in 61, and it uh, has the 6.2 liter aluminum V8. So it's actually kind of fast. Um, it has shit for room in the back seat, but I think you can lay your legs across lengthwise. <laughs> Unlike this car, which has a... This is just so cool. Over this there. thing's cool. I call we'll that. go for a ride. <laughs> John Luke was confused the entire time, but he loved it. Everything we just said, he probably had no idea what we were talking about. This is Warner and his Cadillac. John was amazing. Like I said, we even got to drive whatever we wanted to. And John Luke got to drive his first American car on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> and it was a 48 Buick. Are you because I know things we don't drive all hours out. You use your left foot on the brake when you drive. Yeah, it's not a good idea. <laughs> you, you, it's really a bad idea. You want to use your right foot. Well, let's move it over, yeah? Yeah. I know some people do it, but uh, my personal advice, don't do it. Okay. Hanging out with these two guys was amazing. 
it was like we had been friends forever. We got to learn about each other. We went to Dino Land. We got to have fun just messing around. We did the Shenandoah National Park Skyline Drive in a Hudson. It was such a great time. We talked for hours endlessly about things that most people have no idea about. And we got to become close, awesome friends. These are just my friends and I talking in a garage. Do you want a teddy bear to squeeze for anxiety? <laughs> yeah. You can have this. No, we're going to do it after. I think it's a okay. pillow when you get anxious. Uh, Corey Good. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get a pillow with Corey Good milk. I offended you guys. <laughs> so you have to put it somewhere. And just hanging up on the side. Blue mm. chickens. I want unity in the community. Uh, prophecies. <laughs> oh, Cuba? You have no idea where we're at, Cuba. I'm not going to cuddle a cushion. That's just weird. Yeah. 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 Put it back. No. There the shoe is. fits. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> right. All right. So it's on record, so we can talk about whatever we want. All right. All right. All right. I got nothing to say. Okay. Well, the end. Yeah. We've yeah. traveled. We, John Luke's traveled across many oceans. Many oceans. Well, actually, across one. Time and space. And that. And we've made it here. Thank the Lord. Oh, wait. I got to take this call. Please. Oh, hi, Chris. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Sorry, Chris Miller, no, no, everyone. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, no wonder I had it. Now it's on uh, direct line to Lou Elizondo. <laughs> Lou, are you there? Yeah, lose the guns. Okay. <laughs> Nazi bastard. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, God. I and need a drink of Saurian brandy. Let's, uh, drink that. We've no. got a lot to drink of that story and brandy. I think that's what got us into this mess. Yeah, it's uh, it's not recommended. I think it's illegal on Earth. <laughs> um, Who but, said? You know, with the galactic slave trade and all that. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. No, 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 no. no. This is what we get, you know. So, so we tell send brandy off and we get UFO technology. <laughs> it's Bad. a good trade. It's a good trade. You know, junk from a junkyard. Yeah, they'll love this. They're idiots. <laughs> and then we build it in a really good spacecraft. Oh. Yeah. They're not idiots. We are. We are idiots. You know, I heard that the chocolate, coffee, spices, alcohol, wine, you name it, if it's popular here, it's popular out there. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. I mean, it's the whole Star Trek narrative and trade, you know. I mean, why wouldn't people trade? You know they do in the universe, so. Yeah. Well, that, as above, so below. I thought at one time we were talking about this that the reason why so many different entities are here and we haven't been really messed with overtly was because and I don't know if we've spoke, talked about this before but was the idea that we're almost like a free trade zone I think did we speak about that before where it's like because of the so much like the like well, it would make sense like kind of like when you go to the airport it's the duty free store where right. you just kind of show up and it's the same well look how deal. green the earth is it's so bountiful with animals fish plants spices seeds species are mound yeah it's just, massive it's right? a garden planet so it would it would make sense that people have come here for millions of years mining you know i think peru is evidence of you know the nazca lines you just see these mountains that are flat on the top right and they got a big line on them i'm like i showed that to a mining guy he's like that's strip mining yeah same thing we do today you know, right? so what from we, we're probably doing there. that on the asteroid belt you know strip mining well, that's what they are trying to do now, isn't it? Get up there and mine yeah. asteroids. Well, and Space Mining Bill, they've probably been mining for 30, 40 years. The Space mm. Mining Bill was passed in, during Trump, right? That yeah. was the last year of Trump's presidency. Mm. They passed the Space Mining Bill that allows corporations to uh, hey, do all that stuff. Hey. Hey. How are you? We're filming. <laughs> that's okay. Come on in, Steve. <laughs> Come on. He's been getting into the I don't know. Nothing makes any sense. <laughs> that's the whole problem. That's why you know, we're trying to. That's why we're here. Out. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> mm. It all so, makes sense, though. I mean, we've been hanging out for what three, four days now. I don't even know, but it feels like ten minutes. Who does amount of stuff that we can talk yeah. about? We have conversations with. It just. Yeah, yeah, we just have. Fun. We do that's have the fun. Yeah. That's the big thing. Where well, you if you don't make fun of this whole reality that we live in. <laughs> You're in trouble. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do that. It's it's part and parcel. I think um, everyone else gets up there and talks about serious stuff. It's fine, but you gotta have a sense of humor about it. Yeah, because well, you know, 
The universe is watching. Yep. And it's, ther <laughs> it's, ther it's therapy to be happy. Yeah. Like, and in, in a subject that can get so dark, yeah. you've got to try and uh, raise the vibrations yeah. without sounding cheesy. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone talks about raising the vibration on planet Earth, and it's like, well, create more laughter, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't want to do it at someone else's expense, but, um, you know, but you there will. are some people that make fun of, like Lou <laughs> Elizondo and Chris Miller, and you know, Richard Dolan and everybody who, you know. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, it's good to make fun, you know, as long as you're not, you know, doing any, any kind of negative damage. Yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah, that's I mean, it. People, you know, my friends do nothing but make fun of me, so. <laughs> well, that's all right. Well, that's about the, the rules of banter, all right? Are there rules to think? Of? I don't think there are, are there? No. Mm -hmm. Are there rules to other? I mean, that's the thing. Like, what are the rules anyway? I mean, you've never followed a rule most of your life. I don't try to do it either. Rules are there to be broken. I, I just, I, I see as, as a kid, I just saw a rule and I was like, fuck this. You know, I'm, I'm going to break it. You know, it just felt natural to me. And other people were like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, nothing. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it's like, you know, there's so many rules and dictums and. Uh, you know, you got to do this by the book, and you know, oh, I have a PhD from some bullshit Oxford, you know, this, that, and the other, and it's like, so what? I mean, it's like they try to provide this framework of intellectualism in the world, and it's like, it's false. Mm -hmm. um, give me a, a shaman in a jungle, or, you know, a guy on the street, you know, a, a construction worker. I mean, you know, you don't have to be one of these people with all these degrees, oh, I was, you know, a, summa cum laude or I was you know I have a you know I was a Rhodes Scholar or whatever a Rhodes Scholar in what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know I'm Amazon excited. flowers that's great you know but <laughs> you need to be well rounded I mean my wife always says you know you don't need to be from a fancy university or be highly educated you need to have real world experience and be well rounded mm -hmm. And, and so you got to be a personable and have fun. You have, like, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You from, definitely got to have a, a, the ability to speak with anybody about anything and not be pretentious or, you know, well, and, and that stuff builds it into you. I, I believe at some yeah. point, some of that, like, well, I'm a Rhodes Scholar and I'm a, you know, I'm yeah. You know, they get these panels of people and it's like, well, that's great, but you know, so what? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some of the information is good and it's uh, the rest of it is like through a lens that's very constructivism you know oriented it's like oh it has to be through this framework and it's like no you know, let your imagination wander well so the you know if you go back to the condom report then back in 52 or whatever and they had the, the panel yeah, there's a condom report and then the condom oh never mind go ahead <laughs> That's, what, that was what? the 60s. I, I don't know. That was very it could have been anything. Yeah. It could be yeah. a, Birth control pill came out, and then there was the condom report. Oh, the condom report. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I've been reading the wrong report then. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think they're linked. Everything. You know, like everything in disclosure arena, it's all linked. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, no. I was just what they did is they at the time they assembled a panel of the. You know the most intellectual from universities uh, you know and I can't remember I don't know if Einstein was on it or not I don't believe that I've, ever, I've seen his name associated with it but it was a group of uh, physicists scientists and whatever else and, and their recommendation was study it in, in secret and make fun of everybody who's looking at it and just completely destroy them their, and the credibility of the subject mm. at, at, right off the bat until we can kind of figure it out and that's yeah, yeah. literally what we're still living under at this and that's 70 years ago and it's still like still works because you know the fundamentals work but and like those were the people that we're talking about the phds the minds and everything that didn't i don't know i don't necessarily know every single person on that committee or who they were but maybe these were the people that didn't have the ability to, well, to think in terms of uh, consciousness or any other aspect it was like this is what I know from the book and this is what we have to do yeah, and they needed hippies expanding. on the panel yeah you know, and you know African Americans they needed everyone but they don't it's always you know a group of old white men you know and it's like that's that's not suspicious you know I mean that's not gonna get us anywhere right in fact we're in a real mess by all accounts whatever the truth is we're in a real mess and all those people got us here and I don't under I don't my family's part of that. Yeah, but I don't I don't know if they're do they're trying to collectively see that as a oh we messed that up and now and I think maybe because some of the narratives we've been listening to from people like Lazar and people from uh, you know you know Davis and whoever else they'll come out and say well we haven't gotten anywhere we've got this stuff but we, we it's so compartmentalized that we have like two people that haven't 
figured I out think anything. You either know? wittingly or unwittingly, they're all part of the same counterintelligence deception system that wants to keep this confusion going. Right. And there's a lot of confusion, but the internet changed the whole game. And uh, it's the embodiment of the collective human consciousness. And so you can add more mud to the Mekong River, but man, you can't get rid of it. And so uh, there's, there's an old saying, I don't know who did it, and it said, the truth comes out, always comes out mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it is coming out. It's just, you know, who. I don't blame the general public for being so confused. You know, I'm confused. Right. You know, it's, it's a lot of stuff to consider. And the whole thing about the three of us is like, it's the occult, metaphysics, philosophy, science, history. You know, megaliths, uh, electromagnetic, you know, telluric energy pathways, ley lines. Yeah. You know, you have to, you really, in my view, you have to know all that stuff, or at least a, a decent knowledge of it. I mean, I'm not an electrical physicist, but, you know, I get it. And it, it's like, that's the background you need to, to begin to even understand all this, because the metaphysics, you're dealing with multiple dimensions and realities, timelines that are shifting and merging and blah, blah, blah. And um, if Most you people study can't that. one part of this, <laughs> you can't do it. It just sounds like crap. Well, and it's like, the only people that I know that have gone that far into it are people like us. And to do that takes time. And it removes you from other parts of your life. It can take you down some very dark places. Mm -hmm. You got to read a lot of books. You got and you got to read a lot of books. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's a detriment sometimes to the rest of your life. Uh, but I guess that's what happens if you see it's trying to find a real truth. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'll say it again, the Native Americans have an old saying, you know, the young warrior comes up to the elder and he says, you know, all this is too hard, the path is too hard, uh, you know, and he's, you know, the path of life and, and growing into maturity, he says, the obstacles are the path. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody gets you know, that. And that's profound because it's like, everyone's like, oh, this is too hard. And it's like, it's supposed to be hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, human beings are super creative, and I guess a lot of ETs think we're amazingly creative with a lot of emotions, which mm -hmm. they don't uh, have in abundance. And it's like, yeah, it's really hard, but it's like, if anyone's going to do it, you know, they say, you know, a lot of people say that each uh, species on each planet, they got to come to their own maturity on their own. Yeah. You can get a little help here and there, you know, behind the scenes to, you know, like, you know, tutoring, but. We really got to do it on our own. It's like otherwise you don't learn the hard lessons. You can learn nothing. Well, I think like one thing like about good quotes from good thinkers over time are that they are actually real. And like um, the, my favorite one at the minute is a Rumi quote, which is, "The wound is where the light gets in." Yeah. And that's one thing I think that when we've talked and been together, that we've all got these wounds from it, but it's also where the knowledge and the first for finding out comes from. Mm. Now, I think that's a good thing, but yeah, it is hard. Well, yeah, and like we've said before, I mean, there's us and I don't know, maybe another few people that we can sit and have these types of conversations with on a planet. And like we were saying before, the, the amount of research and study into every little thing that that these scholars would just be like, I'm I'm a professor in. Um, religious history okay well that's great but do you know anything about you know telluric energy no do you know anything about you know like any of that stuff and like you have to be the renaissance man or woman to be able to figure out all of these things you have to be a jack of all trades you have to get your hands in it you have to look into the native american histories the folklore yeah and all these other you gotta piece that, all that in to yeah. the equation it's, it's not easy it's super hard yeah and you know my bugaboo is like everyone in the disclosure movement whether you're cia or you know you're government or your military or your you know civilian or whatever everyone's doing their part um, my frustration you know is there's very few of us who consider everything mm -hmm. and plug in connect all the dots we can instead of saying well I'm only going to do the military you know history portion mm -hmm. I'm only going to do the metaphysics and crystals and ascension and it's like no no man <laughs> All of that is necessary. Yeah. And there's so many people who go out there and do really good amounts of work and books. I mean, I love Joseph P. Farrell. He does, his books are amazing. But then he just stops. He won't consider, if it doesn't fit in with his the, theologian paradigm, mm. well, then it can't, we can't go. And it's like, they won't even consider the secret space program, you know, the possibilities in that. 
which are endless. Yeah. And it's like, why? Why do people truncate themselves? You know, I'm a fan of Greer, but he says and there's no regressive ETs, and it's like, come on, man, as above, so below. You know, the, the, I think they're the minority in the universe, five percent, three percent, but I think all indicators. I think we're all stuck though, in uh, in a sense of especially like the academics and the the big name thinkers, they're stuck in a, a, a cycle of fear of losing respectability amongst their peers. Oh, there's no doubt, so, and I I understand that, and it, yeah. it's true, and I, I don't have a lot of fancy degrees like, to do that. But, but it's like, like you though, and your family, and same with mine. Well, like, yeah, if I was working for a university, I was a university professor, they would have fired me. I yeah. mean, you can't speak your mind. That's it. I've talked to so many people in the email, and they're like. I really like what you're saying, but it's like I can't tell my students that. You can't put your neck out, right? The system. And then, of course, we have the media, which is the worst problem, I think, because um, the only real truth in my book that comes out is from the fringe, from the alternative media. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So that's it. And then, you know, how can you blame the general public for not being suspicious? They've got the CIA telling me it's all it's conspiracy theory. They came up with that term. And then the one I love is um, people only believe what they want to believe. Yeah. And it's like, yes. But that's also just muddies the water even worse when you say that. You know, there's all these catchphrases, and I have a suspicion that the intel community has let them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, like, you know, like the girl who came up to me on you know, whether 30 years ago, she goes, you think too much. <laughs> like, well, you think too little. Yeah. You know, well, she didn't mean it like, but it just came out of her mouth like, you know, that's the consensus. Mm -hmm. The consensus is just have a good time and have a beer and don't think too much. And it's like, some people aren't wired you, for that. Like, well, us, what we, the hell we're is not that? wired for that. Well, the thing is with me is like, you know, when people talk about how like history is written by the victor. But what you can find out when you actually read history and you actually go back into the older documents, you start seeing the truth before there was a victory to restart rewriting it. So if you're lucky enough to find those documentations, you start to see some of the truth. And well, no, there is some in there. That's why I'm a historian. But it's yeah. like they've left, they just, it's huge holes. Oh, yeah. And they just, you know, left a lot of stuff out. And my God, you know, for all we know, you know, the Revolutionary War in America, who knows how it, you know, went. Right. I mean, someone could have just created all that for us. Yeah. And then you could say, well, there's sources from France and England and everywhere else. And it's like, sure, you can, you can cross reference all you want. But um, there's a lot of stuff like Antarctica. I mean, the easiest thing is like, oh, the Russians discovered it in 1830. Well, no, we have the old maps that's clearly on them. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lie. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, well, it's in the book. I'm like, so? <laughs> Somebody wrote it in there. You know, it's, it, it's uh, you know, there's so much. You know, we have a corrupt press. We have a corrupt academia, whether it's witting or unwitting. Most people are just teachers and they're out there going, well, I learned this. My grandfather learned it. Yeah. And now I'm teaching it to you. And it's like, that's not their fault. Right. Yeah. But what is your fault is the responsibility not to consider yeah. do the, do the, the other right. stuff. Well, yeah. this, this is like I was saying about my dad, like he was a geographer. And you know, I talked to him about the concept of caverns under the earth and the, the possibility there might be a whole other world under there. And him being a geographer and a teacher and so on, that's insanity to him. But when I say to him, well, have you ever been there? Do you know how far we've ever, as human beings, been able to drill down into the earth? Nope. All you know is what you've been taught. Right. Yeah. So, and you know what? As he's got older, he actually accepts that. He listens to that. And he's like, it's great because he'll come away and a couple of days later, he'll be like, I had a good, really good think about what you said and you're absolutely right. I've got no idea what's under there. Right. And I've got no, no the truths that I have accepted um, are only the ones that have been given to me. Right. Which well, let's, is, well, let's look at yeah. the inner earth thing is interesting because I look at it from an engineering standpoint. So you're, you're a group of a race of people and you're traveling space looking for a new planet to live. And it's like, well, that one looks cool and it's really dry and they're, well, there's a lot of radiation and lightning storms and shit. Let's see if they're, what the caverns are like. And so you go there and, and uh, you find a cavern and there's water and everything. And it's like, this is great. Yeah. You know, why would you only live on the surface? Mm -hmm. Yes, the earth has a lot of volcanic activity. So do some of the moons and planets. but. It's like, that doesn't mean it's everywhere. 
And so, you know, the word is there's all these giant caverns in the earth, and it's like, well, that's, and you know, why would you, if you have real estate, you're gonna, you know, why would you only live on the surface? Yeah. Most of the real estate is underneath the earth. Mm -hmm. Especially caverns and water and seas and lakes. I mean, it makes sense. We have this surface mentality, like the earth is just an M and M, and we're only interested in the candy coating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a and good it's analogy. Like, no, true. there's a nut in there, and there's chocolate. Ooh, chocolate. <laughs> Shit. We gotta go down there and drill for chocolate. You know. And I always say that it's like most people's. They nibble around the edges of the butter cookie, and they never take a bite in the center because there's something in the middle, and they're like. Well, it could be chocolate, but it could be horse shit. And so, you know, and you know, it's, it turns out it's a mixture of both. But, yeah. you know, it's like, um, you know, you gotta, you got to let your imagination. I know everyone doesn't isn't blessed with a writer's imagination. Right. I mean, my dad said it. He's like, too much imagination on you. You know, and it's like, no. Einstein said imagination is the true test of intelligence. Mm -hmm. And people who have senses of humor, that's another form of intelligence. Mm -hmm. So when we're goofing around and goofing off, you know, that's good. Um, well, it, someone told me daydreaming was a great form of meditation. And I said, well, shit, I've been meditating since day one. Absolutely. <laughs> out the window. <laughs> oh, learn your math. No, no, no. Designing but, a spaceship out the window. That's what they're worried about, though. People who daydream sometimes get a little close to the truth. I mean, when you look into the, the history of all this stuff, the thinkers are the, the dreamers. Yeah. yeah. The Teslas of the world, the Einsteins, the ones that think of a little bigger. I mean, I suppose that's one good thing about this, the current disclosure stuff is they are touching on the idea that we need to think us outside of the box. We need to see our existence and our reality as something different. And I think for people in the West, and it is hard for people to get start thinking like that, unless yeah. you're interested in Eastern philosophies and meditation. Well, the other thing that helps is kickstarts it, I believe, is, is a near-death experience or some type of uh, close call with your mortality yeah. that will, for most, some people will just skyrocket them in a completely different direction. The people that have no idea in this stuff will have these near-death experiences or like, something like that happen to them. Or not even only that, like they'll experience something like in the sky, a ghost, or whatever. And it trigger it, it's like a, a, a speed, it speeds up your entire process for some people. It's, it's yeah, just yeah. kind of like a switch that turns on for them. They're like, well, then if this is, if I experience this personally, then all of this is possible. Or That's like it. any of it could be conceivable because of the one experience I personally had. Like I can tell you all day long that Five reptilians drive me around all day long, but like that doesn't mean anything, right? Until you have a personal experience with it, then you equate that, and then I think in your mind, you, the wheels start turning. And you're like, oh, this physical works. and emotional pain at a high grade changes you, mm -hmm. and it and it adds stuff to people. Whether that turns an atheist into a believer in some kind of god, or it gives someone a, an ability where they can see things that they weren't able to see before. I mean, it's written about throughout history, and it's happening to people every day. Yeah. yeah. What I, you know what's interesting is people are like, well, where's the proof for all this stuff you're talking about? You know, ancient civilizations, Atlantis, UFOs, inner Earth, you know, the whole gamut of it, you know, secret space program. And it's like, look at, look at the, our reality and history around us. Women are still, you know, the divine feminine is still treated second class. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, it's still, you know, uh, 150 years ago, writers were held in high regard because books were very popular and now it's like you know in DC there's the National Gallery of Art my great-grandfather donated and then my grandfather donated the East Wing to all these amazing artists but if you're in DC and you go to a cocktail party and they say what do you do well I'm a congressman and I work at the Pentagon or I'm on a CIA you know and it's like well I'm an artist and it's like oh <laughs> and, you know they build monuments to artists and write you know writers and creatives but you're treated as a third-class citizen yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm like, well, it's interesting that you're that's one thing, and then you've got you know all the other stuff that never history never changes. And I say, if you want a clue that something's really messed up with our reality, look at history because it's like the royals continue to be rich and powerful, and they still have power behind the scenes. The elites still rule over the poor. Wars happen for no good damn reasons mm -hmm. anymore. And uh, they still recruit people and they mind control people with all this stuff. And religions have a firm grip on humanity still. Even with the Great Awakening and everything like that. And it's like, why? And it's because, you know, everyone's like, well, you know, my dad would say, that's just the way it is. And everyone cops out and says, that's just the way it is. No, it's not. No. 
It's not at all. Human beings are creatures of love and kindness, and mm -hmm. most of us are really, you know, funny and everything like that. But we're ruled by all the fascists who are cold and humorless. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why? There's something, you know, the all-seeing eye represents, I think, E.T. at the top of the pyramid. And it's the only way, because human beings, we'd be like, oh, should we fight a war? Nah, let's have a concert. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's who we really are. Yeah. But it's taking more and more and more force. I mean, look at the, in France, all the protesting, they have to bring up soldiers and they're, it's to keep us stamped in our place, you know, tamped down in our place. It's taking more and more Absolutely. aggression and well, it's well, good because distraction. It, because it's, it feels like it's waking up. I mean, like, look at a couple of years ago, we had, like, in at least in America, there was everywhere there was riots, there was protests, there was, I mean, all over the place for yeah, everything. Distract people with a, with a race riot. I mean, yeah. The saddest thing in the world. Or school shooting, which is terrible. the lowest knuckle dragging, horrifying thing you can do. Mm -hmm. But wow is it effective and then everyone comes out and says this is really sad we should ban guns like the guns did the killing not the people and it's like you're not talking about you know the mind control which is obvious yeah i mean yeah. in the 50s it's like what i told you everyone's like well see all these assault weapons okay let's go back to 1947 it's right after world war ii if you're an 18 year old kid and you want to go shoot your students you can mail order an m1 garand and a bandolier of ammunition and do basically the same job in 1940s, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Now you can go back 200 years and say, well, there's no school shootings back then. It's like you could take a blunderbuss, fill it with pistol balls and rocks and glass and nails, and go into a school and reload it in 30 seconds and, and do almost as much damage 200 years ago. Something has changed with people. Yeah. And everyone says it's the violence on TV. I'm like, there's been violence on TV and movies forever as feels, books and anything else why even, the last yeah, 20 years yeah. i think it's they're hitting the last ditch efforts to keep people distracted and confused well, controlled we, yeah. but we've also yeah. like you know in the, in the last 100 years we've gone so far away from our own natural environment into yeah. the cities and the huge technological advances that it's like we're losing track of what our own humanity is right and i think that that's when people start to be easily controlled and can be sent into a spiral when you end up with these shootings and murders and yeah. you know back where in the UK obviously where we don't have guns but this feeling where hope there's less hope mm. for young people the future doesn't seem as, as content like you know it's scary times it seems like an agenda I mean it, it yeah. really does they're trying to you know the Native Americans have a saying if you if you go live in a city uh, your heart will turn to stone yeah yeah mm-hmm and you live in nature and it will replenish itself and it's well if it's all consciousness and, and just say yeah. anything sentient just say living things are sentient and part of our consciousness the, if you surround yourself by part of what we are it seems like it would just amplify and make everything closer to each other mm -hmm. or to better you know to, it's like an amplifier when you go into the woods and you have all this life around you and you're part of that you're part of the earth i feel like that's one of those things that's like solid like unifies us as, as, a, as a species yeah. or, or as like the planet and one of that but if you're standing on concrete all day and there's people yelling at you and there's yeah, yeah. you know like all these things that doesn't it, it keeps you completely segregated from the, at least the nature side of your life well, and the, i find a big problem is the fact that they've done a real number on actually being spiritually minded or connected to nature like i know that me growing up if you were like that you'd probably get mocked by other people it creates an environment where you become yeah. almost like a laughing stock no one wants to hear about their the hippie stuff anymore you know even if it's real it makes people feel good and I sometimes I'll speak to people where do you know if you talk to people on that level and they're not used to it as soon as you can break down the bound the barrier of them feeling uncomfortable yeah. they feel exactly the same way anyway mm -hmm. so it's like it's like a big sort of smoke screen like yeah. it is we're all brainwashed into letting go of our humanity I mean, I'm old enough to remember as a kid, Nixon, you know, and, and the hippie movements in D.C. and all the riots and everything. I'm old enough to remember all that. Boy, were the hippies. Uh, 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 my God, I mean, my dad thought marijuana and the hippies was, you know, a communist infiltration. <laughs> and uh, maybe it know, was. The worst thing that happened in America. I mean, people yeah. were going around beating up young kids because their hair was long. Mm -hmm. 
you know, not to mention civil rights and, and, and the end of Jim Crow and all that. It came all at once, the consciousness. A lot of people say we almost broke away from the worldwide control system in the 60s. So I don't like the long hair and the beads and everything, you know, but, but they, have, they were right. You know, love is all powerful, back to nature, no war. I mean, all the messages, you know, you know end of racism yeah. and inequality. Yeah. And they all had the right ideas. And what did they do? By the 1980s, they made the, you know, the recession in America was gone. They, they cheap cocaine and crack everywhere, uh, really great music, you know, and, and they distracted everyone. Let's be a yuppie and drive a BMW. Mm -hmm. And you know, kind of, sort of. But then in the 90s, we saw the revival of the hippie in, in, in Well, in senses. a grunge way, which yeah. I thought was very depressing. I mean, yeah. look at Nirvana. No offense to him. But he was, everything was about heroin and suicide. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not... But then well, you get the other the stuff where they culture. bring. Yeah, I think yeah. the rave culture was all about unity and love. It was. It and was like you know they were still yeah. doing the drugs and stuff. They still try. You know, yeah. 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 It's like it's like it, people try and find the way back into that culture. Yeah. But like everything, it ebbs and flows, and it seems like every twenty years, twenty twenty five years, there's this cycle. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's just like a wave. It's like oh, I remember this. Oh, that made sense, and but they incorporate it into the new thing. But there's not a continual role. No. That's interesting because I just wrote something into my new book that I'm writing now, and they were talking about Mother Earth and you know portals and, and you know ha, you know alignments and astrology. You know, and the Germans were all into that, so they're in Germany talking about this. And the scientist, I think it's Ernst Schaefer, the Ananarabe SS, says, "Aha! We've just found out that every 20 years, Mother Earth has a biorhythm yep. that ah. goes up and down. Could be it. Yeah, yeah. And so." Uh, this is how natural portals and things sort of open at certain times of planetary alignments. It's because of this natural biorhythm. But they were talking about the Nazi bell and you know Walter Gerlach and all these guys, and they said these guys are toying with the fabric of space-time, and they really could rip the Earth apart because if you blow up a plasma accelerator like the Nazi bell um, and you do it underground, you could mess with the tectonic plates, and if you do it at the bottom of the Earth's biorhythm, it stays mm -hmm. there, maybe, huh? You could destroy the whole planet. Wow. Well, you know, um, so you know, Vladimir Putin right now apparently is working. He's very interested in a, in a Russian philosophy called Passionarost, which works on the ebb and flow of the of a country's. Oh, they've known about it. The shamans and everyone. They've known about it since time immemorial. Yeah. But yeah. When you get. <laughs> German physicists interested in it. Yeah, yeah. Mm, you but, know it gets a little dicey. Um, but I think that the fact that like you think about German physicists being involved in that, and then when you look at kind of like the influences on modern politicians like like Putin, that is a thing. If anyone can be bothered to look into it, the passion of us thing. Um, these philosophies are influencing people right now, and they always have been. And but they're just not spoken about because people aren't going to understand them. No, it's the same thing with um, Pasolka. Diana Pasolka pointed out that every president has to go to NASA, Cape Canaveral, and look at the moon. It's a moon ritual. Yeah, yeah. And the full moon, they yeah. all go, and there's all pictures of them looking up at the moon from Cape Canaveral, and it's like they have no idea. That's just a, a thing. They do it all on a full moon. They do it all at like, or solstice or somewhere near any of that. That's we right. put it, you and I figured out that a lot of the press releases yep. and a lot of the, any of the any of the TTSA documentation releases oh are, yeah it's all on on lunar or, yeah. or solar, solar yeah. calendar things where it's like oh it's the, you know Venus is in this house or whatever or it's a solstice or it's a full moon the first full moon of the month or, so, so the or stuff the, uh, season the news that we've been getting given is being dis distributed in an astrological fashion in a time in a time where these energies that we don't under we don't understand yeah. as a society or embrace yeah. are either amplified or whatever so yeah, the it's like all the out. nasa patches have astrology and, and occult symbolism yeah. and everything and they would do moon launches i think that apollo 11 was launched april 20th or someone said hitler's birthday or something yeah, there was um, something about that, wasn't there? Yeah, one of the launches, went, it was very carefully timed, and they said, oh no, it's the azimuth of the Earth, and the, yeah. the moon and everything. It's like, yeah, but there was a lot of astrology in there. What I found interesting was during the 80s is that I read that Ron, uh, Nancy Reagan had an on-staff astrologist. Oh no, FDR. FDR did as well? Had one. Ah. Uh, what was her name? She was famous. Uh, the woman, um, FDR, Truman, Ike. There's all the same woman. Wow. And then I think by the 60s, even Kennedy. So it was, 
and I, you know, I, I wasn't a big astrology guy. I thought it was all sort of weird and I stuff. I had no idea that they had the same woman over that many presidents. Oh yeah, and I forget her name, but anyone can look it up. You can see that it was like having a court astrologer like Don John D for Elizabeth I. Oh yeah. I had no idea. My guess is all presidents of the United States probably had one in secret. Mm. Um, because there's something to it. Um, I think it was Alex Collier or someone who said that, um, you know, an ET perspective on astrology was it was used in space for navigation through plasma fields and gravity wells and because of galactic weather and the alignments between planets you could you know you were moving in your mothership you could get sucked into you know some, some sort of thing yeah. and so it was used for navigation but somehow on earth it got used for a lot of maybe they used it like an algorithm you plug it in and it's used for all kinds of purposes yeah, yeah. and it's with us you know, the whole stuff in the paper you know that's all oh, low yeah. level stuff who cares but if NASA's using it and presidents are interested in it, well, But that was like wonder. the first public one about Reagan that I was aware of because Reagan wouldn't travel or he wouldn't give speeches or other things unless it went through her, her astrologer to say, oh, it's not a good day for you to do. Right. right. Because, you know, it's April, you know, April 14th is the better day. And you can go this. mad with someone telling you to do that. Yeah, I think yeah it's, it's a control mechanism, right? right? It's, it's, some point. But it's been kind of going through history, right? hasn't it? Like, you know, like the idea that you had in Nazi Germany, you had... Eric, Jan, oh, they had Hanusen, House Offer, House Himmler Offer. had a staff of astrologers and people. They took it very seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, because you can't do a ritual, if, we, if it's a Babylonian ritual or any other kind of ritual, the planetary alignments, the energies, the cosmic energies of radiation, gravity, it's all intertwined and so it's not, you're not going to get the result yeah, yeah. unless you do it on a certain date. I mean, I'm, I'm a novice at that astrology stuff. No, I, but, I really but, don't know that much. But it's this perfect disinformation, like you said about the newspaper. We've turned it into this gimmicky thing. We're like, oh, you're a Libra. Well, then that's the don't sign any side. contracts. Yeah, that's and, the public. Know, don't, yeah, yeah, that's the whitewash. So everybody's just like, well, that's or they get Miss Cleo and like, oh, girl, you know, don't go out with that man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. But I think every that. star system has their own zodiac, oh, and, and, and that yeah, would make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if you want to use it to navigate space, that's great. If you want to use it on the planet, well, what else can we use it for? Well, weather and galactic weather. Well, what's the Atnakin device? What it, what, I can't remember yeah. the name of it. The one, the, the brass device they found from the, the ship in Greece that they oh, took. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a yeah. planetary yeah. calculator. Yeah. It took up like 20 years, and it's like, this shouldn't exist. It's completely brass, and it's yeah. a computer for or the Or was time. it pre-Diluvian? Yeah. 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 Like, what is this thing? You know, could they probably the sold them on the streets of Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's your alarm clock. Or yeah, something. Or yeah. Or, you know, it, yeah. Yeah. They wake up. The it's, Venus is at noon. Okay. Right. People are like, where's the evidence for all that? It's like all around you, the pyramids and everything, it's all built in. It's not like they had flat screens and computers. They didn't need that. It's all consciousness based. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you know. I think maybe we're tipping to the point now, and like Duane here, who I've spoken to is amazing. She said that it, she believes, or from what she's been told, she's a psychic channeler, but she said that the we're a solar system in this universe, and it's a spiral galaxy, and we're spinning into another part of the vast vastness of space another part of the galaxy where all of these energies and all these different things are concentrated and hitting us now space weather these different things are happening to us but it, something to us is awakening us in a much higher clip than it has been like it's getting to a point where like it's not just people that read and do research but like everybody's getting a little bit more hip to the Whoa. themselves or consciousnesses or, or you know like it's it's kind of like a great awakening as a species yeah. not only us but everything else i mean i think covid's helped that like the mm -hmm. fact that it put everybody in the same boat across the world like rich poor every, yeah rich, whoever you are like yeah. your life came to, everyone to a was stop. affected yeah and then so in some some ways like as a positive for me it gave me a lot of thinking time away from the rat race and i think it's the same for a lot of people right which has probably actually helped to speed up some form of awakening in people Course. And the other side of it is the fact that it woke people up to the fact that they're easily controlled, <laughs> and there's a power that, is, that can basically yeah, do yeah, whatever yeah. they like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, for a while, the gas was rationed and food and supermarkets. Yeah, and we toilet accepted paper. it. The toilet paper thing is nonsense. I don't know what happened to humanity that everybody decided to hoard toilet paper. But like, why does everybody's shit have? Well, the Roman, <laughs> like, yeah. 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 the Romans used a sea sponge on a stick. 
Yeah. It's all you need is a buck. I mean, it's not the greatest thing, but it's I know, but a like, what, of water, why, salt water. Why are we like conditioned as a sponge. species to hoard not food or water to keep you warm, but things to wipe your ass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make well, sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you I wouldn't have know. that trouble I mean, in India because they just be like, well, we don't even use this stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's just, a, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's just an American thing, right? Yeah, it, didn't because, happen, it didn't happen in England. Did you guys have a toilet paper? Shirt? Oh yeah, we went mad for it, and I, and I was down there as well, filling my trolley up with toilet paper because. <laughs> Because um, was. I, had, I had a guy, like, he was telling me that, he goes, oh, you know what I've been doing? I've been cutting my old clothes up into small squares. Just to, and I'm just going, Jesus, this is insanity, yeah? Corn cobs in America. Uh, no comment. I, I think years. it's not a bad idea to hoard some well, TP. Uh, well, you've got you to be controlled. But I mean, sorry, you've got to have control of how you're going to survive in a, right. in a situation right. like that. But all you need is a sponge. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. I mean, I know it's not the cleanest thing, but if you put salt in a bucket of water, or even if you just bidets have water, just skyrocketed. The, well, the, the no. sales for bidets in America went like ten thousand percent. Bidets were like nobody used them in America. But yeah. after that, you couldn't get your hands on one, on especially what? a bidet. You know the way oh, you bidet. Yeah, yeah, you hook it up to the toilet, and it's just a valve, and it's a water, and you sit there in water. And, but yeah, like you, pretty, could, you couldn't get one. But like in your, is it? You, well, you know, in Great Britain, we're like you guys. We don't have uh, B days everywhere. But if you go to France and stuff in Spain, uh, yeah, they're everywhere, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Or any, in, I used to India, love going on like holiday. Was it? Yeah. No, in, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a bit. Well, I don't know. I mean, but, my time in India was not as advanced as that. Like mm. I was in areas where you didn't have Some toilets. Some say that's the better. <laughs> that's the better way. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but I don't know. But it's just like it changes us as a culture as well. Because now well, it's in the, now it's kind of acceptable. But how soft are we as a culture where we've got to the point that the thing we scare about, uh, are scared about is how we're going to wipe our asses. And like we've been infant uh, infanticide, we're not, we're, so we're, we're, we're not become kids. mountain men and pioneers anymore. We're, There's very few people with survival skills. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got survival equipment here in the bunker, but I mean, it's like trauma kits, med kits, if we, medical supplies, or something. If the supermarket's shut, most yeah. people won't even know how to plant a seed. They, they won't know. know they won't know how to like. The, they say the deer and every, animal population within six months. I think the U.S. Army did a metric, and they said in America, bye bye in six months. Mm -hmm. And there's another U.S. Army metric that says after 12 to 14 days, the average person without food will kill for it. That's it. And that's a hard thing to swallow. Society will fall. But you know, a, a mother will kill for her children. Right. But then you, survive. but then you put that into our, our modern urban lives like cities and towns and the division between rich and poor is pretty big so you get to the point it's like the town i live in you'll have estates that have got very very little and then just down the road you've got an estate that has very like, absolutely everything so you'll what, have to, cooperation is the only way to survive it is but before you shoot everybody you know, it's not going to work but, you, but the, you know the reality people get scared that if they're you know that is in people's heads because anybody that thinks in terms of prepping or the danger that's out there to them the danger is always other people Hmm. You know, like after the environment has has taken away your comforts, what's out there that's going to hurt you is other people. Well, like small town America is, has been shrinking for 150 years. Now, in a small town, if you're I don't know in, in a rural area, in the old days, you know, oh, you know, they didn't have electricity, and in the winter, people stored food and they prepared, and so we we don't do that. We're on a two week supermarket schedule pretty much mm -hmm. except for certain places in the world but uh, it's like you know you have to almost think like 18th century guy you know do I have black powder do I have flints to start a fire do I have firewood water and dried food you know you have to think you know beans and things that 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 I can survive on you know and they took it in stride yeah, well, yeah. And, and, and a modern as... village today which is completely collapsed and they, that's why they want everyone in the cities you know, you know and, and it's like it's the saddest thing in America. I can't speak for the world, but it's the shrunk, the shrinking of the small town. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can come together in a pinch. Yeah. No, I don't like you, but hey, in an emergency, I'll support you. Yeah, because you all support each other. Right. But then, but then they've introduced class systems over the years or over the centuries. It gets to the point where well, that's been whether well, it's the Anunnaki and. Sumeria and that, Blacky Tepe time. That instant divide, if you can't overcome that, if people always think like and people will always think like that until they can't anymore, that's that's the boundary you have to overcome. You have to you have there has to be a leveling situation where people do want to look out for each other. Well in the in the medieval period as far as I know, when the plague hit, the elites and the royals went up in their castles with their armed guards and they rode it out. Mm. And you know they didn't care about anybody else. But I would think during famines, uh, people naturally go to strongholds. But for for 
to really survive, cooperation is paramount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's amazing what you can get done when you get a group of 100 people, and let's do this. I mean, the Amish build a barn in a day. Have you seen that? Barn raising is amazing. Just, mm -hmm. You know, the Amish will have no problem surviving without electricity, gasoline, supermarkets. They know how to do it. Yep. You know, I admire the hell out of them. Nobody else, you know? Native Americans as well, they'll be able to do that. Native Americans yep, will, yep, you yep. know, and the rest of us are high and dry, you know, with our freeze-dried food and M&M's. That's it. You yeah, know, but, I mean... You, I don't, all I don't, these people with giant bunkers and caches of food, well, that's so stupid. In an emergency situation after a couple months, people are going to raid your house and your bunker and kill all your family and well, take your food. I mean, what's good is hoarding. And the people I'm, that I'm we look to, you guys keep but talking. if you share it with everyone, yeah, you're going to you be better off. Well, the people we look to to be our leaders and the ones that you'd hope were going to be the ones to help you are the ones that have got the biggest bunkers and the most food stored. And they oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see a lot of politicians with bunkers and storage of food. And, but that's, mean, if there was a, a crisis situation, aren't they whizzed the way to safety? Um, yeah. We're My not. dad was, and when he was a senator in 9-11, he said he, you know, uh, got on a train at the Pentagon and they whisked him out to West Virginia in, in under 10 minutes. Yeah. So, there you go, under, underground vacuum tube train. It's real. Um, and they have everything they need. Continuation of government, COG. Yeah. It's the people. It's everyone else. But that's it, and that's, that for me is enough to sort of look at it and just be like, okay, so if these people are there for our better interests, when the shit really hits the fan, they're the only ones that get away from it. Right. First thing I would do is open my gate, say welcome. Welcome, yeah. Because I don't want people coming up here with guns and shooting to get something. I, I'm happy let's to share everything. Together. Cooperation yeah. is paramount. Well, let's dig a garden. We've got to do it. Stan, when the deer's gone, they won't eat your vegetables or your garden, so you have a garden. That's right. That's but it. until then, hopefully the deer meat. And but good human decency and cooperation gets twisted into political words like communism. Or well, they do that, you know, but in an emergency situation, nobody no cares. one cares about that. Exactly. Yeah. So really, like, we're out there going, you know. But this is the big mirage. This is it. This is the lie, isn't it? That we yeah. we have scared of these ideas, other political ways of living, and so on, until they actually happen to us. And we know right. what we need to do to survive. No plan survives the battlefield. So, I mean, it, it's like people talk about all this stuff, but it, it has to happen. Yeah. So you got to go look back in history and see times where there was. And when people did the best is when they all came together and cooperated. Yeah, yeah. Not go around killing each other. Um, that's been sort of an American mind control thing. Mm. The movies they come out with, you know, end of the world and you know, surviving road bands against, you know, hostile aliens or... The wolves or whatever it is that's been implanted it's like uh no you know it's like after disasters look what happens people help each other out yeah, yeah. it's a lie that's been perpetuated since the planet of the ape movies where it's like oh nuclear war and everything falls to shit and it's survival of the fittest and it's like no you see the big hurricane um in the 1930s or you read about it and everyone helps each other out mm -hmm. yeah because yeah, yeah. all of a sudden everyone has nothing yeah yeah. And there is no class division. There, who cares who's, what religion is what or what race is what? Everyone comes together. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think we need, like, I mean, how, World do, you War do, that, how do you do that without a tragedy, though? I mean, that's the secret. How do, you find, how do you find a mechanism to do that, to bring people together without there being a calamity? Very difficult. Well, well this is when you look at the disclosure movement. It's impossible to bring people on the same page other than the basics. Well, yeah, I suppose, I suppose like, that, that takes you back, though, to the, that big overarching idea of the conspiracy of the New World Order and a New World Religion and creating a, an event, like the Blue Beam stuff, that could yeah. get us all on the same page. I think they'll do it. I, I, think, I think it's a last-ditch effort, but I think they're going to do it because all these school shootings and all these other wars and everything, they're trying all kinds of things. If you have the eyes and the geopolitical history... And it's like, what's next? And it's like, there ain't much next. Well, besides, because people are—they know people are waking up. Yeah, you know, Chris yeah. Miller and Lou Elizondo wouldn't be out there doing a bullshit dog and pony show unless they absolutely had to. Yeah. And the DIA and the Pentagon doing, oh, they got the UAP committee, which is a nothing burger bullshit. But they're talking about something that's not kosher, and you know, UAP is UFO. So they'll do this false alien invasion thing. And it'll kind of work for a while, 
galvanize people, join the Space Force kids, you know, do this. Uh, but then after a while, people would be like, wait a minute. Yeah, but how many people I saw would... this in a movie, you know, Independence yeah. Day or whatever the fuck it was. But, <laughs> and they'll be like, something's not kosher here. And, you know, and that, no, very few people in America trust the government. Yeah. But I think there'll be so many other people when you say that. There'll be, there'll be people that'll join the side of the aliens instantly. Well, so, I mean, the there, there's a, have the galvanization of people of, that will join together as a humanity, but they'll have other people going, I'm working with the aliens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least the argument will be over whether all this is bullshit or not. The argument's moot. It's mm. like, okay, now we have a threat to deal with. What is the truth? What, how do we deal with this? And they'll slowly, over the years, figure out, okay, this is bullshit. Um, somebody cobbled this up. And, you know, the stories will, people will move towards the fringe because they won't trust the news media. Uh, it Something like that has to happen. Yeah. Because of the control system is very well designed for the last 10,000 years. I mean, you delve into history and you're like, wow. You know, the church, the religious imams, or the, those people, and the kings and queens and royals and, and the militaries, they have controlled us for so long. You know, and it's it, in every country, basically. Well, yeah, but I suppose like you still get the strongholds, like the places where people are still spiritual enough to look at within inside themselves for the answers than outside. Like you know, you go to play parts that's of gonna, India. That's a long journey because it, even for myself, I was like, oh, I'm afraid to go inside because there's nothing but you know horror there. But you know, it, it helps to go through the night, dark night of the soul. Yeah, and I, went, I think I went through two of them, and it's like, wow, I really needed that because I knew about some of this stuff, and I was like, eh, and I got lazy about it, and it was like, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. you need to be shooken up, and, you know, almost close to death, and that does other people awaken more naturally, but it was like my higher self had to shake me and bash my head against the wall to do it. And I was like, oh, okay, you know. seems unfair at the time, doesn't it? But then you meet Seems horrible. But you meet like-minded people, and it gets a little easier. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Thank God for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's going to do that. And a fake alien invasion, if you think about it, I mean, we all, everyone in the disclosure movement knows it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. But other people don't, and they'll be like, "Oh my God!" And they'll be praying and mass prayer, and you know, they could unleash some real horrible crap with the technology they have to frighten everyone, oh, yeah. and they could kill a lot of people too if they wanted. Whoever is going to unleash the operation, mm. you know, to get people to fall in line with join the Space Force and, you know, God, guns, and country and space, the Klingons have invaded. And, you know, it's it's not good to think about it. And a lot of religious people might commit suicide. Well, I mean, yeah. I think that from what we've, our research anyway, is that it's not like the Vatican hasn't been on top of this since the very beginning. And they're... If the research goes right, and if you, historically, they're sitting on the world's greatest cache since at the Library of Alexandria. For, uh, oh, they'll, they'll spin it like, you exactly. know, oh, this and was meant to be and all that, but or, slowly, yeah, oh, God I mean, a is, lot of you know, can create the other like, aliens just uh -oh. like God created humans. And yeah. you, and they've already said that. They've made that, it was in yeah. the 90s they said that. Otherwise, the pedophilia thing would have never have come out. And it's been happening since the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, Before yeah. that, not a peep. Well, right. look at it now. I mean, like, I mean, the Catholic Church, and we talk about the Vatican, it comes up all the time in this field, you know, the secret records, but if you actually look at the Catholic Church and what's happened over the last couple of decades, people are dropping off that faith at a rate of knots because the truths that are coming out are filthy. Now, I'm not saying that Catholicism is, but the things that have been attached to it right. are abhorrent. And Well, you know, someone... I think a billion dollars. This is what I, in 2020, I saw this article and I had to check, double check it. They lost a billion dollars in people giving money to the church in 2020 alone for people not go, physically going to church and handing money. That's a bill, one and was billion. was because of COVID? Yeah. Because of COVID for 2020. And if you mm. take that number, which is conservative, and just do 30 years, of, uh, just do 100 years of that. Yeah. How much money are they sitting on? Well, all of the money, like all of the money, right? At that point, that's all of the money. They've got access, just like the rest of the deep state, to unlimited funds. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing I always go back to, and, and you know, I get a lot of grief from it, you know, I know it's important, religion is important to yeah. people, but the Christian world, the Western Christian world, their logo is a guy being tortured to death on a cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's supposed to be a religion of love and forgiveness and all this shit. It just, 
uh, boggles the mind. What I find funny is how many pictures of Jesus have got Jesus wearing a cross. With blood. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like on appendage. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the ETs have said to people, you know, my holy crap, what, what is... This is know. horrible. And they're like, oh no, you don't well, understand. It's a symbol of a death. You know, he died like. for our sins. And they're like, what sin? There is no, there are no sins. They're like, what does that word mean? Mm. You know, and we've been taught this whole heaven and hell sin thing in the Christian world. And it's like, you know, Islam is better, but it's still, you know, patriarchal. Even Buddhism is patriarchal. Yeah. There's no women, monks in Tibet. That's just I'm Tibet. sorry. That's still yeah, my in mind. LA there are, but you know, that's LA, California. No, and, and, and you know they treat the young monks like crap. They beat them up and stuff. And everyone's like, "Oh no, the Dalai Lama and everything." It's like, no, he he was either blackmailed by the CIA and Bruno Baker of the Anunnaki SS was best friends with the Dalai Lama. This is dirty history, and it's all intertwined. I believe either they had the Reich Tibet Institute in the 30s in Berlin, mm -hmm. and the word is, you know. They had thousands of monks there translating the text for technology. I'm sorry, this is, you know, I, I think the Tibetans were misled by the Nazis. Absolutely. And then once they got to Berlin, they were like, ha, ha, you're not but, going home. But at the same time, the, the Tibetans, pre, pre the, the Nazis turning up, where, you know, the, you had the Bond sorcerers, which yeah. is what the Nazis attached themselves to, and that was death rituals and sacrifices. The American Nazi party were more obsessed with Tibetan bond rituals, which is animistic, and, you know, nature stuff, and gods and, and things, than Germans, than the Germans were. They Absolutely. were like, we are so proud of the American, they were doing so many bond rituals. I wrote that into Little Anton, some guy emailed me and said, how did you know that? <laughs> I, said, I don't know, I read, I read it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. read. You know, but it, it, it's like, it's the weirdest thing, you know, why would the most hated, the SS, the Nazi party be into Tibetan animistic bond rituals and Norse as a true mm. religions, you know, uh, religions are more like faiths and philosophies. And it's like, because we're taught black and white history, and it's all gray. Yeah. Some of it's lighter gray, mm. some of it's darker gray, you know, but it's all gray. It's nuanced, and nobody likes that. It's like, oh no, that requires deeper thinking. Mm -hmm. Everybody no. just wants the answer. They don't want. They don't want my to do friend, the word. My friend, says, I, my friend says, one of my best friends, I said, he says, I won't read your book. I'm tired of the Nazis. I only want to read fluff or whatever. And it's like, well, they're still here. Yeah. Fascism is still here. Your whole world, world is fascism. He's like, no, ignorance is bliss. Uh, I just you, know, you go, can see. go walk your path. Mm -hmm. I mean, people who can't see, like living in a modern Western world, that can't see that that stuff is still alive. And they well. don't want to see. It's willful. Well, it may, it's up to guilt. If you actually see it, you know how you're actually complicit in it because our entire system is built upon it. That's yeah. why we have race riots kicking off. Oh, absolutely. That's why we have like, you know, entire areas of the country that are ghettoized still. Yeah. Morgan Friedman said it best of anyone. He said. They interview him on TV and they say, what do you think about racism? How would we stop racism? He's like, stop talking about it. Mm. And it'll go away because, you know, I grew up in D.C. and, you know, you, just, you had black friends and everything. And nobody talked about it, you know. And, it, and now they, they keep, you know, making it worse and there's race fights and new groups coming, you know. I mean, I'm sorry, the Antifa flags are just the German... Uh, um, in the 1933, you know, the German Nazi party was part of that, reversed. It's like the Ukrainian patches are SS Panzer divisions. Yeah. Oh, they just changed it a little bit, but it's still there. They just copied it. The oh no, you're a racist for saying that. Symbo I mean, symbology, on. but you understand symbology. And yeah, they no, don't. most people don't. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, as soon as you start to don't. understand symbology, you see a deeper meaning. In everything. Yeah. Because of Mason, that's one of the things that really switched on for me when I went through the degrees. Because all of it's symbol, symbology and allegory wrapped in, you know, truths or, you know, esoteric meanings or, or meanings that are associated with it. We look at a, a skull and crossbones, you know, associated with the Jolly Roger, historic, you know, pirates and things like that. But it's a symbol in masonry of something that's completely non... Uh, it's a symbol of mortality that... Basically, it's the immortality of the soul. It's yeah. the basically immortality of, of life. It's a grim image to anybody that walks down the street and says, oh, that's, that's death. 
Is it that thing behind your head? That's death. You know, well, that's yeah, no. That's it's the life. biggest it's, thing of all. It's eternal life. If it's, people realize that their you know their souls and everything last go forever, it doesn't matter how bad life is. It's like you know the next life you do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, reincarnation and then and, and that's the universal the norm. Yeah. But all the a lot of religions don't practice that. Not the Western Christian one. It's like heaven and hell and death, and you're dying. There's other death. ones like it's India. All fear. Yeah, it's all like fear. They believe yeah. in it constantly, and they have evidence of it to prove it. There's like this little girl comes in. Yeah, I, I used to be up the street, and the guy shot me in the head, and she has. She's that's why I don't like Stephen King. It's like anything that promotes popular culture, movies, books that promotes horror and fear. I'm I'm against that because it, it, everyone's like, oh no, you know, war and everything. It's like no war is dynamic. It changes things. But stupid horror and meaningless fear mongering stupid horror movies, that's it's meaningless. So negative energy. No, I yeah, hate war. The vibration. I'm a military historian, but I hate war. It's disgusting. Well, but you have to understand it because it's a I think it's a mass death ritual and the occult is wrapped up in it nine ways to Sunday. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like and the Nazis were into the occult for nothing. Mm -hmm. They knew they were like wonder off our weapons and stuff won't work. Unless we understand planetary alignments and the occult and, and the history of it, and you know this alchemical, uh, anti-gravity red mercury stuff, technology in a plasma accelerator will not work unless you understand astrology and all that stuff with it. Yeah, yeah. And they had, by all accounts, the Nazi Bell had all these symbols. Now I don't know if they were ancient Sumerian or what they were, but it was necessary for the technology to work. Mm. And the Keck, Pennsylvania, I'll, I'll take a page of Richard Dolan, who talks about it over and over and over. <laughs> but the Keck acorn, which was probably a bell ejected from a craft, you know, the army came down. It looked a little different. Was he the original Nazi bell? Maybe. Was it one we cobbled up? But it all had these strange symbols. And they've, they've, they've said that as well. And like Roswell had the eye beams that supposedly had... With the symbology. symbology and it like must that. be integral. It could be a label saying, warning, high voltage. <laughs> you know, but... It, it's Don't like, touch. <laughs> you know, uh, warning, radiation. Mm -hmm. but it's like, what does this mean? You know, yeah. and it could be something like that. But I think it's also integral to the technology because ancient Egypt, the walls are covered in symbols. Mm -hmm. And so the message is there. So if you're going to go into a temple and be affected by a vibrational, you know, telluric energy, whatever a, a, a stone temple is, without that message, you know, affecting your consciousness, what you're going to do in there, astral travel or something, it won't work. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like reading the directions to a piece of technology. Yeah. Ooh, read before operating. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's like, you know, if, even if you take it to the Christian church and we were at the, the DC Cathedral the other day, the symbology and the, the Latin and where they place the stained glass windows, stained glass windows music, it, it's all there to, you know. Whether that's a Sumerian text or a la set of Latin words, it's the same thing, isn't it? It's this harnessing right, an it's energy all of a verbal symbology and, you know, it. It's like a cathedral is an analog waveform generator, so you've got all this sound vibration, the color coming through the stained glass windows, that's important. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sound, you could, it's sound. a machine to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, good or ill, and it, But that's all part of the effect, mm -hmm. whether it be positive or negative or everything in between. What did you call it? It's an egregore. Egregore, that's it. Egregore, yeah. you know, I didn't yeah. know what that meant. Yeah, it's then. basically the, the energy that's built up to where I stone or a structure has a living a living or, or a collective consciousness of that structure so right and where my thing is like all of a sudden in 1300 you know the cathedrals came out of nowhere yeah. and they were magnificent and i'm like where did the freemasons come up with this was this some <laughs> ancient atlantis oh they found the blueprints in the holy <laughs> grail you know it's like let's do this yeah and one guy said a uh, uh, philosopher type guy said cathedrals and churches were originally for amplifying love and light mm -hmm. not religion yeah, yeah yeah energy and I thought that was interesting mm -hmm. because even if you're you know another religion or you know you walk in the cathedral the beauty and the sound is still mesmerized absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. the I mean, dogma is is that's, that's the all, bad, that's the bad shit <laughs> yeah, it's a software right yeah. Yeah. here's the machine the computer well I sat in that church and you Use know, different not, software I'm so not a Christian I felt yeah. something in there you I love the power. cathedral it's beautiful yeah. it's amazing you did.
do yeah. feel, yeah, you do feel a, a, a. But when a guy gets up on a stand and starts proselytizing and saying, well, Psalm mm. 23, and I'm like, again? Yeah. <laughs> Seeing this hymn over and over again, it's repetition of dogma. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's Joseph for Goebbels and the Nazis yeah. and the Communist Party. Repetition of dogma. If you go to a 12 step program, it's fine, it helps some people, I understand that, but I went with a friend. You go to a 12 step meeting and it's the same shit over, 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 and it's, over. It's also repetition of dogma. The concept of sin as well with, with all, most religions, the idea that you're controlled by, your actions are controlled by fear. It's the same thing. Same thing in the 12 yeah. step. It's like Absolutely. you're a bad person, you're an alcoholic or a drug addict, and you've got to, you know, they, they, they work on fear and guilt cultivation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Same thing with religion. Sorry. You know, it, it's the same thing. They cultivate it. It's like someone said, why is the porn industry making billions of dollars? Because they're cultivating lust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's the... Think of a, a giant farm in Iowa growing corn for miles and miles and miles with big machines. They're cultivating en masse that energy, uh, whether it be lust, uh, religious dogma, whatever you, you want to do that. And this gets back into the human race being, you know, energy cattle, or mm. cattle harvested for our energy. Yeah. Well, we're easily controlled. I mean, I, mean, I didn't grow up with Not so much anymore, but yeah, it's... Well, I look at my, my wife. I mean, she grew up as a Catholic, um, and she, I, I wouldn't say she's a Catholic now, but she still feels Catholic guilt. Mm -hmm. She still feels that at times she's pulled back to it at times, you know, and then comes away from it because as soon as she goes anywhere near it, she sees it again. <laughs> but it's still there. It keeps on happening, you know. Like, right, you know, when they yeah. was a kid, you know, God hates you, John Warner, said a teacher. <laughs> and your daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did. They were, they, were, they were like, oh, my God, we've got an, a live one again. You know, every out of every 300 kids, there's a live one. And... The dogma and the hymns and everything didn't work, so now we're going to have to double down and use the threats. Yeah, yeah. And so they said, God hates you, and don't you feel bad being sinning all the time? And I was like, no. <laughs> you know, I'm not hurting anyone. It's just pranks. Yeah. And, and But thinking for yourself was dangerous. Yeah. But, you know, when you don't argue with a teacher, he knows, he or she knows best. And I'm like, no, I'm going to argue with it. I, th I think this is wrong. Yeah. You know, and it, and so when that doesn't work, what do they do? They kick me out. And then you feel lonely. You feel like you're on your I own. I felt much better. <laughs> yeah. Well, in a really yeah. religious school, I was like, my thought, my dad thought it, the rigidity of it would help me, and it did the opposite. It, it did me a huge favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, okay, there's a huge scam going on. Vietnam sucks. Then here's I am in a religious school. My mom's a hippie telling me, this is all a conspiracy, and she was right. <laughs> I think and so. Even my dad said, oh, Vietnam was yeah, such a, wrong. Such a strange mixture. Like, I mean, you're the creation of like your mum, who was obviously a total hippie. You need the mix. Yeah, and your you dad, who was a senator of the uh, Navy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm very militaristic as a child. I understand you know, some military stuff. And it's like, you know, you need some of that to understand the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they couldn't understand why I was always in the library reading stuff, but it was not my homework. Yeah, yeah. They're like, do your fucking homework. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm reading about uh, World War I and yeah. the uh, Turkish and Armenians. You know, why did they go after the Armenians? I was very curious about everything. And they're like, John Malone apply himself. And it's like, they do this to kids. Well, it's when your focus isn't what they want you to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. That's Some control. cultures teach their children, and I think ETs do. They teach them in a circle, and so the the teacher gets up and they they say they go to each child. And they say, "Tell us what you're interested in. Tell us your passion. Tell us, you know, what are you in oh, botany, space navigation, astrology? You know, I don't know, military warfare, history on Earth." Oh, that's a good one. You know, uh, look up John Warner. And, you know, and they 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 nurture you. It's like I guess a Montessori school is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're Steiner, an artist. Didn't, didn't Steiner create those? And they schools? yeah, they, they, they nurtured the, the kid to go in the direction like of their passion. Mm -hmm. And they you know they always told me you could do that in college. And I went to college and it's like there were more choices, but there was nothing. You know, there wasn't a, an occult class. You know, yeah. I had to go find the books and. Why were the Nazis into the occult? 
you know, because I combined warfare and weird stuff, and I was like, woo. But, you know, like, you know, that as, was cool. As you found out, and, and us, like, a lot of the time, what you find out over time is people in my country, for example, like, were involved in the occult, but they've just done a very good job of hiding it. Mm. Oh yeah, it's so super complicated. If, you, if you start to like dig beneath the surface, and you know some of these people, you realise they are all, not all, some of them are involved in it, are very well versed in it, but they would never say it publicly, and it's never going to get out. Well, the secrecy across the board, everything, financial, military, UFOs, technology, the occult, everything. I mean, even the Freemasonic stuff. I mean, I'm of the view we just. We need to open all the doors mm -hmm. because it's the secrecy that's preserved the Egyptian mystery school information and technology for the good of humanity. Yes, but and and maybe now's the time, age of Aquarius, where they always say, "Well, mankind's not ready for it." Mm -hmm. They never say well, womankind or mm -hmm. humankind. They always say mankind. You know? It still bothers me that we've that we as a society and, and on the planet have done a very good job of treating any type of spirituality in the female form as dangerous and immediately as eliminated. Yeah. And that's a that's all of the witches at the stake. They're all witches. Yeah. 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 And then patriot and then you're not allowed to be a Freemason woman. You're not allowed to be a priest. You're not like mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. we should just flip it on the completely the other way. Yeah. Let them do well, everything. The the con the concept that, that it's gonna mess up a man's mind to have a, a woman around them. That's basically <laughs> Well, I'd say that's well. If, if they said, okay, there was a revolution in America, and they said, well, let's replace the government, I'd say, find a round table of multiracial women to rule the country. Yeah, yeah. No men. Mm -hmm. Because we fucked everything up. I'd love to see it. Me too. I think and they would do a much better job. I but that is, you go to the Pentagon, and they'll, they'll well, haul you away in irons. I think that probably all three of us here can say that we've got a better woman behind us. Yeah, <laughs> got that right. We do. <laughs> so, I'm wrap myself in this questionable. In, in What's the, that? I can't see what it says on there. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it's freezing in the damn bunker. <laughs> Do you want coat? Yeah. You're yeah. right, eh? I don't have. There's one down there. No, they're not. Okay. They're yeah. not. Yeah. They're not comfortable. <laughs> well, we don't have to keep going. I mean, but you know, you're all right. Yeah, yeah, we can take a break. Yeah. Should we take a break? No, this is no. You we're good? in the groove. We're in okay. the groove. Okay. Right. So yeah. you know, it's. Um, well, we think we've solved it. We just let women run everything, and then it's all. Yeah, we're trying to fix the world. Oh, in two hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I, so here's my side. Council of Women UFOs. Yeah. But I think that women all like, secrets open. Women rule the world. Yeah. Uh, although it's coming, it, it's inevitable. Whether it's in five years or fifty years yeah. or even a hundred years, it's coming. It since World War II, you know. I like what I found funny yesterday coming. was when we were talking about the idea that if we did find out how to make a zero point energy generator. Which you kind of see sometimes people messing around with it's the idea. It's not that of it. hard. That's why but, they have to knock on so many doors and say, "Yeah, we but then, own you, it. but then you get some rednecks trying to just hack the system a bit and have a bit of fun with it. What well, can we do with this? We were discussing this yesterday in the car, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> you know, Lockheed Martin idea. says, you know, here's the plans of you know doing this uh, cube of, of you know clear cube, and then you can put a load on it, and be careful. It's you know 100 million megawatts. You know, you, you see these guys on TV, you know, who drag a car out of a field after 40 years. Liam, let's see if we can get this Cadillac started. They pour gasoline down a carburetor and they fix two batteries to it and boom! Oh, we got it to turn over, you know, get the squirrel out of it and everything. Imagine if you give them one of these things from Lockheed Martin. It's like, Liam, what you gonna do with that free energy cube? Let's hook it up to the Cadillac. And all of a sudden it's like, boom! You know, electric, put out, haul out the electric motor from the, you know, hydraulic dam. <laughs> put it in there, we'll hot rod it, we'll choke that Tesla Musk boy, and what fur? <laughs> son of a bitch, you CIA mind control, son of a bitch. And then, they, 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 you know, 500 megawatts and the whole town goes, you know, all the lights pop and everything. And it's like, um, well, some of this technology we might be, be careful with. Because yeah, yeah. all these guys coming up with over unity. Mm -hmm. Things it creates a signal and they know the signal and they come get you, but it's like over unity machine like Tesla invented one and I think the Germans use it on a submarine. 
it's not that big, but it it starts slow, but then it it keeps going, and all, at a certain point you Lucky get dynamo. more electricity than mm -hmm. you you put in whatever yeah. you're doing. Yeah, yeah. It has an electrical component, and um, you know you do that. Then it's a gradual electrification. But you know the the clear cube they cube. They found on the UFO on a shelf, and some guy just put a load on it. And it was like, you know, the whole building <laughs> went crazy. It's like, ah, I'm not sure the public is ready for that because you know they're like, well, I got a Tesla. We'll put ten of them in the back. <laughs> See how fast you can you melt the tarmac and the tires. We would do that. And yeah. You know, we, we might, would do that. I would you know, do so, that. Yeah. So, that, so now we've gone back on what we were saying about getting all the secrets out there. So you have to regulate if these things are real. We're yeah. back into regulation for for safety of the planet. Well, there's that, and then maybe that's part of it. That's why I think they've truncated battery technology mm -hmm. because people are going electric. It's the future, and so my friend does hot rod uh, Volkswagen Bugs and little Porsche 914s with electric motors. He says, "Holy shit, you get a 300 horsepower electric motor," and I thought. Well, if they had the good batteries, which is probably what Tesla's making out in Utah or something, that's, you know, a million times better than the lead acid. And lead acid batteries are from the 1890s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're still using them. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. It's, you know they have it in secret. And um, but once you combine those technologies, boy, the, the human race will go to town. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you'll, you'll have a desert community. They have one little cube, and it's all of a sudden they can run... Des a desalination plant off of it. Mm -hmm. The world will change overnight. Well, this is what needs to happen. Well, this is what they're trying to prevent, or they want to do it slowly, because I, I read a report from one guy who said, no, nah, I think GE has plasma accelerators in the back room, but they're slowly testing. You know, it's, it's experimental. You know, Lockheed Martin's in the energy business all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. you know, and they say wind and solar, you know, Bullshit. Well, they've came out recently and said that they've worked on small, tact they call them tactical, uh, the size of the coffee table, nuclear devices that last for 30 years and have so, uh, but that's for military applications. Yeah, military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have them and you can create them. Now, there's one thing that I have a friend who works for NASA and told me that when they design any of the landers or the satellites, I said, tell me about the power source. I can't, I can't tell you about the power source. Well, why not? Because we don't design that. You mean you don't design that? Department of Energy designs that. So well, then how do you know what to do? Well, we tell them how much power we need, and we tell them for how long, and they show up in this box. And then they attach it to the side of our thing, and, we, and then we connect it, and that's what it is. That's and those people don't talk to us, we don't tell them any, I mean, we tell them what we need to do, and they show up, they make this happen, and it goes up. So I'm like, how does it work? And they're like, uh, well, <laughs> Look, look at the command module that went to the moon. Apollo 13, something blew up. But you can't go to the moon with just rocket technology. You've got to protect the command module with some type of bulb, gamma radiation, micrometeorites. So they had some type of electromagnetic you know, black box on Shooting, there. Yeah. And all the Nazis working for NASA, Kurt Debus and everybody, they cobbled something together. Ha, 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 we went to the moon with chemical rockets, but we had other technology. Joseph Farrell noticed that the limb, when it took off from the moon, it just, it wasn't, it didn't accelerate like a rocket, it was very steady. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, that's another technology. So we had some of that whiz-bang stuff to get us to the moon. Right. Because even Von Braun, you know, they made these giant chemical rocket engines, but they knew that once you're in space, you need the whiz-bang ET stuff. Propulsion, yeah. And so they've got all this stuff. It's just, I think it's gonna be leaked out slowly and then little groups of people around the world, communities, will just start using it. Mm. And the deep state will come back and say, this is illegal, but slowly it will be so many groups, they could shut down one town. All right, damn you hippies, and we're taking this, we're confiscating it. But then other, the, the word is out. Yeah. How, you know, make the cube or whatever, it's not that hard to make. And maybe some ET help. Hey, here's a bag of cubes. <laughs> it's like, give them to the hippies. You yeah, know, but that's the thing. You were right. That could be a weapon. That could people be in the Bronx, and, and they'll detach from the grid. Yeah. And so you'll get these organic communities. The hippies had the right idea with communes. But you couldn't do it back in the 60s because the deep state was all around you, and people started to infiltrate, and they ruined it. Mm. But if you make communities where, well, we have free electricity, come work and live with us, well, you're going to attract 
good people. Like minded that, people, right? Yeah, yeah. And the people taking advantage, you know, they just won't do it. And so organically, disclosure has to come from the public. So organically, little technologies, states of mind, you know, come live in, you know, uh, Buckwheatville, but we have free energy and you can start a business and, and you, it'll be farm to table and it, it'll start like that to where the deep state and the government and the military, they can't police it anymore. It's, it's happening organically all over the world too fast. Mm -hmm. they, it'll be like whack-a-mole. They won't be able to do it. And then over time, it'll just... Be part of society? It, like electricity it. like electricity was in the 1800s. Like we were talking about earlier, yeah, about, about you the experiments and the or and something to power it. Alchem alchemical electricity that was, right. the, and then you know it was a very uh, politicized uh, device where you know you had Edison electrocuting elephants to try to push DC, and then you have all of these things where people were scared of it. They didn't want to adopt it. I'm not going to put that in my house. It's going to blow up, and everything's going to. So like for years, people, I'm not putting electricity in my house. But we're more. So, yeah, as a society, yeah. most of the world is more used to higher technology. We use right. computers and cell phones, and this is all right. back-engineered ET tech. Right. For the most part, not that our engineers aren't clever, they really are, because they take junk and they make it really good stuff. But, uh, and that's hard. It's like being a hot rodder and going to a junkyard. How do I make this work? I'm going to bore it and clean it. Yeah. Magna flux it. Yeah, can I get this adapter plate for this transmission right. to the motor because it, it, it doesn't work. Some, so it's, it takes some brain power. Everyone's like, oh, well, that, and like you said, imagination. Like you just can't, you know. Well, this is it. You need people are already doing that. They're yeah. linking computers and networks together and building something. Right. And it's just a bunch of college kids, right? Or high school kids, mm -hmm. or you know, farmers. You know, are always adaptable. Mm -hmm. You know, and the guy who comes fix our tractors and comes with a laptop. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, yeah. it's all changing to the point where there'll be a tipping point where the whiz bang technology that will change society, free energy, free electricity, um, anti gravity, I think, it won't be that people realize it's not that hard to build. Yeah, some people might get in trouble, get hurt, and things, but progress is always dangerous. But anti gravity, according to every whistleblower, it's really safe. You know, let's say the Hudson here, I got a 53 Hudson, you make it anti-gravity, it's like, it's really stable. <laughs> you know, it's floating three, three feet off the ground. Now, whatever powers it vector-wise, you got to be careful with that, because yeah. you've got to stop it with yeah. another. But it's actually really stable and safe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the, the story of the ET who said that, it's like, why do you guys continue with this airplane technology? It's really dangerous. Everyone crashes and it burns up. But that's all we have. Mm -hmm. And then like, once you go over to the anti-gravity stuff, it's really safe. Mm -hmm. You can have a hoverboard or a hovercraft or 53 Hudson, and it won't be that hard. But I always they say flying a UFO is really easy okay. and safe. But they said, but the thing that always got me was when I was trying to figure out, well, if that's the case, and say we do that, but anything that's magnetic. If, you, if, if it's a magnetic disruption device, electrogravitics immediately involves time travel. Because you're bending space and time at the same time. Yeah, well, we're traveling through time right now. I mean, people get think, oh, time travel. I mean, it blew my mind 30 years ago, and then I was like, eh, I'm over it. <laughs> you know, because space travel is time travel. Yeah. They proved that with the space missions to the moon. Right. And so, once you're sort of over that component, um, it's not that big a deal because... But you're um, not just going to get everybody... A, just to go to Mars travel. involves some time travel. Well, Especially if you go really fast. Right so now. anytime you're engineering the space-time metric, you're engineering the space-time metric! Right. You know, it's like... Uh, what is it? Not the Mandela effect, but there's something else. You can do an experiment, you know, that's really easy. It's high school shit. You're like, oh! That's time travel. Well, a double slit or something. Yeah. Is it that one? That's, that's quantum mechanics. Oh, right. Dimensions. This is, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is the element of all this stuff. I was like, I don't know. Quantum mechanics, the double slit is that if it, you know, the inference pattern, there's photons through slits, yeah. and they spread out like a shotgun pattern when nobody's witnessing or viewing it. But if you, as soon as you put a human to view it, 
they line up and they match the slits perfectly through the whole thing. The double slits. Yeah, it's right, a okay, difficult yeah, subject. Yeah. The whole time travel thing, but right. it's, that's where it gets me. It's like it's we really not that big a deal in the end. Unless you got Cletus over here hooking it up to his Ford, and then all of a sudden he's yeah. going back in time and. Anything that's, <laughs> anything that's moving speed-wise in one direction, it is. There's a time travel component. A train going by, oh, the yeah. sound, you know, they, they have the Doppler effect, mm -hmm. and so there's a time travel. So that's taking a different rate to mm -hmm. reach your ear. Mm -hmm. You know that there's some time travel component in that. I think that's the experiment. Is the Doppler effect? Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, time uh, is a component in space travel. It's like let's set the GPS for Mars or Venus or whatever and it's like you also have to set the time coordinate because you don't want to arrive there at a, before you left Earth you know, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the paradox things and they're very careful in space travel all these people with the SSP they're saying oh no no even if you do deliver a load of hamburgers to Mars or whatever you got to be really careful because um, a, they say a lot of time, like a cargo ship will come in from another planet or star system with trade goods, and it's like they'll have to wait in a certain place for a while and wait for the time clocks to match. And they're like, okay, now, now you can deliver your hamburgers, and that makes sense because space travel and time travel and gravity—it's all one and the same. It's, it's how you manipulate that. Mm -hmm. Manipulate the space time. So is there, there so there has to be you know how we have an atomic clock that regulates our earthly time because of the vibration that you have. Well, it should just say now. <laughs> time is now. Yeah. Because there's nothing but now. But like uh, there, there have to be a universal construct for that uh, at least agreed upon. Like right now, we can't even get the damn time straight on the planet. And I right. think that's by design. Like it's five hours behind in England, and it's it's like yeah. we drive two states, and it's two hours behind. It's like why is it such a big damn deal on our planet? We can't even do that. I don't. So our well, system or galaxy? They maybe? definitely time travel. Let's say Brookhaven Labs in Long Island. Yeah. They probably sent a team going back in time and kidnapped George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> and they go back and it, it, it looks a lot like the 18th century, but it's a little different because it's not the past that it's always now. And so yeah. it's now for them then, but it's a little different. And so like, wait a minute. GW was supposed to be at Trenton, and they're looking at their watches. And like, he should be here now, according to the history book. Well, it's because you've gone back in time, and either you change something, or and if you change the least little thing, it creates a new timeline. Mm -hmm. And so here comes George Washington, but he's three hours late. Well, shit! And then they go back to Brookhaven. They say, "What happened? You didn't do your I, I, he was late." And they're like, all right, rejigger the computers. <laughs> they rejigger everything. All right, okay, you're going to be there at the same time. We got it this time. And they go back. And Fucking late again. He's six, very six hours late. God damn, they had to stop and hunt some deer. And <laughs> Fucking Hessians over here in Trenton, you know, drinking beer. Almost got eaten by a bear. Shit. <laughs> and they've been frustrated. And I'm, you know the Germans try to, you know, let's go back and get Bismarck. You know, we need him. And it's like, this mark didn't show up, and it's like, oh, shite's off. <laughs> what happened? And then, you know, and they fuck up the timeline over and over again. And it's very interesting to read about people who have been in that program, and they're like, oh man, it's super complicated. And then an ET shows up and says, hey, what are you guys doing? Because it's affecting when you move one gear in the universe, all the other gears move, and so. Somebody is in a, another galaxy going, oh, let's plant this you know, lovely garden, and all of a sudden a meteorite is like, wait a minute, that wasn't some, aha, somebody's, and there's like a time police, uh -huh. a time corporation or whatever it's what called. What was that name movie, Tenet? Was that the movie that was? Yeah, that was Tenet. Tenet. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, come yeah, and they yeah. say, um, you keep doing that, and nuclear weapons are ripping through dimensions, that affects yeah. the space-time continuum, and they're like, uh... My watch should read now, but it's saying five to one. Something's wrong. You guys are fucking around. Yeah. And you'll actually get um, there. It's a neutral thing. You know, they don't care if you're starting a war, but it's like you got to keep to the rules. So you can do your time travel thing, go back and kidnap George Washington, but you could have to do it within these parameters because it's affecting us over here. We're trying to plant tulips, and, it's not <laughs> and so that's the law of one. We're all one, and it. Do you, know, you move one little gear? You'll never notice. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> you know, the Germans or somebody, you know, deep state people make up their torque wrench. They will never <laughs> notice this time. Get land here. You know, they hired the guys, the Cadillac guys. We got it down. We got the time machine all wrapped up. Look it up to 10 cubes. <laughs> we got enough power. We got Brookhaven Lab over here. You know, call Eric Hecker. He'll do it. And, uh, you know, and they, but no, no. Because once they move that gear, someone's like, fuck. <laughs> Fucking rednecks on Earth. They're doing it again. Go back there. I would really like to believe that, that we just got a bunch of rednecks somewhere. Yeah, just going, fuck it, hook it up. What's your oh, problem? Absolutely. <laughs> It'd make you more fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, is the battery on? Oh, yeah. Because that's what they've done. I mean, the military, uh, it, it's... They, you know, Project Rainbow, the USS Eldridge. They didn't have a psychic navigator. They were they were just trying to make it optically invisible to radar. Poof! But instead, they were did some hyperspace travel. Whoops! You know, <laughs> T. Townsend Brown did the emitters on the main mast, and John G. Trump was involved. Einstein. They had all the best minds. Tesla. But they were like hooked it up to all this high voltage, and they were like, "Well, what do we do now?" And everyone's on board, you know, eating hot dogs, and they're like, "Ah, flip the switch, <laughs> see what happens." And they're like, shit! <laughs> and everyone come back, you know, fried, burned up or fried in bulkheads. Stuck you know, in the bulkheads. Like what did we do wrong? Yeah. And probably a Pleiadian said, um, you idiots, you need someone on board to be able to travel dimensions. You need somebody on board, or they all need to be psychic. I, you and think they were they like, able shit! To come up with that electronically now from, like, right. from some of the. Stuff. You still need psychic. That's why the, 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 the deep state and the military are so interested. Oh, you, you're psychic? How about coming to work for us? Or better yet, they just throw you in the black van, you know, and they take you away with a bag on your head. Yeah, you're working for us now, Jean Luc. Well, well, if you're really you're psychic, working with you Lamb Steve, come on, boy! Yeah, yeah. Use your psychic navigator skill, <laughs> and it works. Yeah. Because you need a psychic component. Mm -hmm. We're all psychic, it's just two different degrees. Yeah. So, it's funny, it, it's like, <laughs> American military, well, we, this jet's gonna go Mach 50, and they're like, should we test it in the wind tunnel? Hell no! Just get a pilot in there! Just <laughs> Chuck Yeager! Throttle the firewall! <laughs> you know, and it, I ended up in another <laughs> dimension in galaxy, and they're like, shit, we lost another one! <laughs> Build another one. Fire, firewall those throttles, and, you know, come across Groom Lake, you know, at 100 feet altitude, full power, and he disappears through a portal. Shit! <laughs> God damn it! And they tweak something out and, until they get it right. Well, that's what. So they're... there's all these guys all over the universe going, oh, these shit, fuckers. I'm lost. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. we were doing something back at Groom Lake, and they, they just threw the switch, and all the ETs are like, uh, idiots. The, so <laughs> what that gets me is like when you hear the stories of the Russians that are like, we're bait. UFOs and then attempt to shoot them down and then they get fucking taken out. Like I've heard met multiple stories of Russians trying to engage with U UFOs to shoot them down and just. <laughs> well, and the Russian troops are getting taken out. Just, yeah, their planes are just getting like bing, 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 just getting popped out of the sky. Self defense. I mean, but they're, like you said, we were talking earlier, the Russians are just throw, throw, throw a guy at it. Like, hey, well, throw the it. Russians just throw <laughs> a bunch of people like, at it. They'll throw a hundred guys. Yeah, here's a hundred guys. Go figure it out. Like, yeah. And use, they're and they're big and use a like, tank. <laughs> use a tank. Yeah, get big the tank. on tanks, man. Yeah. Use a tank. We got a jet engine. Put it on the front of it. But yet, yeah, no, they'll do it, and they don't give a shit. But they're the ones that spurred our spike program to increase tenfold because we found out the Russians had a thousand people who were they had a, there. Well, the World War II, they had a psychic army. I don't know how many, but they, they the Americans and, and the British Backing, the Allies, yeah. well, we were way behind the Germans and even the Russians in some sense because they were much more into metaphysics and psychic stuff. Even though FDR had a psychic team going, in Arlington, Virginia, in a warehouse in the late 30s, engaged with the OSS uh, before the OSS, but that was rolled into the OSS, and so they needed that. We had to have our psychics to understand all this stuff. Everyone thinks, oh, psychics are rare, and it's like, no, there's a, millions of people who are we psychic. All are. And we all are. Yes. Just yeah, some of us more than others. They're in the programs, or they don't remember, or whatever it is. Uh, but the Look, psychic component is important. The Russians, though, have actually got some really good data on the PK stuff and on the Psy stuff because with with video, you know, like uh, lab stuff, and it's it's there's so From much the more, 40s, like, way more. 50s. Like you, you can't believe. 
yeah. it's all that you can well, do there's it. There's photos of gray aliens come from Russia, and I, I thought, well, this is probably real because the Russians are really good about, you know, hey, we did this, you know, and then yeah. leaking it out mm -hmm. when it's not critical to their their program anymore. And so, America, everyone says we have the most programming, the most security, the most. That's why it costs seven times the R and D is the trillions and missing trillions is because we trying to keep American people thinking about, you know, football, basketball, Book. and politics instead of everything else. Well, the, the idea that with people realizing that they're psychics or they've got psychic ability is massively dangerous to the, the powers that be. Yeah. Well, so, look, the movie they made in the 90s, the little girl, the fire starter, fire starter she yeah. would be able to start fires. Yeah. And I'm sure that's based on truth. Well, well yeah. they had the... the the, the Russian lady from the 40s, they would, I can't remember her name, but no, I can't. they had like clear Lexan tables like this and boxes and she would yeah. put, you know, like uh, a book of matches or whatever and yeah, she would just put her hands out and everything's clear and she's doing this and the box slides yeah, to this hand or that hand or right. yeah. and that's just fire. what was shown in public, imagine yeah. what they had in oh, secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people could then list, lift cars off the ground. Well, DeLong you know, said in multiple interviews that the Chinese now currently have a program where they have little children. Mm. Able to, there's videos of pulling uh, a, a jar with a note in it, top, you know, real tight, from across the room. The thing comes through the top of the jar and slides across the floor to the kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all, once you get over that hump of disbelief, it's all, it's nothing big, no big deal. And then if you train that or you right. enhance it or whatever, then. But that's why they do, they, they, I think they do kidnap children a lot because you got to get them at an early age. It's like, racing now they're, they're training kids to be racing drivers from age five wow. go kart wow. because you've got to build up that second nature skill so when you're 18 everything's second nature yeah because but with psychic ability though i mean like again going back to other countries other other cultures that probably foster it more we were talking with us talking about that book that secret of the people or the people of the secret yeah, yeah. and the idea that you might have Sufi masters, the Sarmoon, yeah, the Sarmoon. Sarmoon, yeah, out in Afghanistan or wherever they are in the mountains, actively working on a day-to-day -day basis to block right. us developing our psychic abilities because they know what that would do to the world. Well, like, also blocking the nefarious programs and the programs, yeah. So it's that like are trying to do, you know, a giant Babylon working using psychics, and it's, it's you know. Well, there's these people in their that's what programs doing. that said that that they have active groups of people. Psychically blocking different facilities, high high value government facilities from other psychic spies to come in, and they're like, yeah. you, you know, but some people are like, well, they must have been at lunch because I got into the basement, you know, or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I really think every out, every but. army since the last twelve thousand years have had a cadre of psychics. I mean, look at all the astrology and everything wrapped up in military warfare, and it's legion. It's everywhere. But we've done a really good Condon report job of also putting the stigma on that as just bullshit. Mm, exactly. For, like, oh, it's, it's oh, the yeah. palm psychics, yeah, you're the neon psychics. Yeah, but that's like that. another psalm. Yeah. Like, in this, some of this research I've been reading, like the idea that the, the Sufis, mystics, are actually sending that out as a psychic message, that it's bullshit. <laughs> that it, that <laughs> yeah. it even stops people wanting to try. As soon as they try and actually use a psychic ability, yeah. they stop pretty quick because they go, oh, I can't do it. Yeah? Or yeah. public embarrassment. Public, public embarrassment. Because nobody yeah. wants yeah. to be yeah. the odd guy out. I mean, there are right. a few of us, you know, the three of us were like, nah, we don't care. Yeah, don't but care. a lot of people care. growing up, it's like you want to be, you want to go with the flow, be part of the right. herd, so you're not the, you know, there's a cartoon of a guy sticking his head up from the mass of the herd, and it's a guy with a lawnmower. Yeah. And that's sort of this, our reality is like, those who, who tend to be, uh, you know, alternative in any way are labeled as hippies and heretics and, and whack jobs and everything. I mean, the conservative yeah. world that I grew up in of very wealthy people, it is incredibly boring and stultifying, and coat and tie and conformative, bar none. I mean, you go to the Waspy enclaves and everyone dresses the same. Mm -hmm. Whales and pink shirts and madras and preppy stuff. It's a uniform. Yeah. And it's saying, you're either part of us or you're not. Mm -hmm. And so you go there and it's like, that's why they have dress codes. Mm -hmm. And they don't and No hippies need to apply. They, they, they don't, and then nothing like this is ever spoken about. Even, yeah. even when 
it's brought up. It's yeah. still this Chris Millen said, you don't talk shop at a family reunion. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's all what I'm about is talk shop. So but that's I'm your family. Him. If you can't talk about any, I mean, that's one of the things. I mean, I consider you guys family because I, you are, but still, like, if you can't ex- share your most. Oh, no. He was wildest. apoplectic. You know, yeah. He was very quiet and you could see his face. And I said, we all, you know, there were six of us, and I said, we all have the UFO hobby. And then he took me aside later and said, you don't chop shop with family business. I was like, wow, really? And the next time I come, I'm going to come with a billboard and a loudspeaker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't listen. He knows that. The rest mm-hmm. of the family wouldn't listen. Yeah, he, my cousin Josie or somebody would listen a little. But the problem with a lot of people waking up... Because they're still... It's not in, a problem with afraid of the, the, in, in her family, they're afraid of the stigma. Yeah, yeah they're afraid mm-hmm. of the stigma within the family, family even. let alone you know, high world. society and uh, it's thunder. Whoa. That's a symbol. You know? That would be... And that's Lou and Chris. The threat thing. of embarrassment. <laughs> you know. They found us! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Lou Elizondo... Uh, a de Glock arrives. Yeah. And, uh, but it's like the threat of they ridicule is a powerful tool. It is. Or just ostracization too. Like, oh, you're just you're just this guy or you're yeah, crazy. People, and, people, yeah, a lot of people, you know, they, they write comments, but they said, I would never give my real name or anything because I, I don't want my friends and family to find out I'm, I'm a disclosure person you mm-hmm. know, because they would uh, ridicule. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I think I just embraced that freak flag and said, I don't care because I don't. I mean, I really I don't. I think I've done that now. I've accepted it. It took a while for, for me to do it. And you lose a lot of things along the way, but it is what it is. But you gain other it's, things, like the yeah, friendship, you, gain you know. Things. What you lose, you, yeah. you gain yeah. an, an alternative. You know, I mean, I'm lucky my wife is, is very understanding about all that. She's open-minded. Yeah. So many people are not open-minded. And I've heard, I've heard stories, which is terrible, that people, at, like marriages end. Marriages and, end. And things like relationships are just destroyed right. because of this thing. And it's like... That's why early on in our, when we were dating, I was like, you need to know something about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Come on. And it's, it's good that you didn't come off right off the gate I and just went to the whole thing. Like, there's Jack Cody and Reptilians and Lou you know. Elizondo was but she, you know, she was CIA and she understood. Because <laughs> you, know, oh. you would have been like, yeah, right, I got it. You know, to people who aren't, it looks like uh, insanity. It looks like psychosis in some respects. You know, if you're not that way-minded, yeah. as soon as you start talking in terms of metaphysics and, and even using words like awakenings and so on, people just are frightened of it. Like because they're so used to what's in front of them, the physical world, and just the next day and the thing they're going to buy and the holiday they're going to go on. And oh yeah, I mean, the, you know, the thought. consumerism, collecting physical things and everything. But you know, I'm always mindful that you know this is it all really doesn't exist. I mean, we, we co-create our reality a, a couple billion times a second, some say, and it's like. VTs are amazing. You leave a room and everything just stays as it is. Mm. When where's they're on their mother ships or whatever, and they leave a room, everything disappears. See, they don't need it to be there, but we collectively agree, you know, this is a 53 Hudson, this is what it looks like, mm-hmm. and we go away, and it's still here. And they say, that's incredible power. It's magic, we've made something out of nothing. Yeah, our 12 strand DNA, we've got, and that's why everyone's so interested in us for various reasons, mm-hmm. and Mother Earth, and connected to Mother Earth, the human race is integral, and we're really, really powerful. Everyone says, holy shit, you don't realize how powerful you are because we're so, that's why we have so much control system on us. Because mm-hmm. once our, those 12 strands activate, whoo boy, that's like 12 <laughs> Formula One, 12 cylinder Ferrari, wham! That's like, that's like giving every redneck 1,500 yeah. glass cubes then. Because then we just, Whoa! They don't, no one knows we're kind of an experiment. If, if it's true, we're unique in the universe, the yeah. 12 strands. They're like, 12th dimensional beings that only have like nine or whatever I, I'm not an expert on that but it's like they say it, if the human race makes it you know <laughs> holy cow you know um, and that's why everyone wants to use our DNA mm. but um, there's a connection between Mother Earth and our DNA and I, I think like you can take people out in space and it's okay but it's like the 12 strands work really well I think here because <laughs> it's connected and it's coming and then when the, once those things fire up, I mean, we're off to the races, mm-hmm. literally. Yeah. You know, it's like, then you know, you know, I, I think we'll go the route of the positive. Yeah. Um, because love is the most powerful force in the universe. I believe that. Yeah. Um, 
so it, it's, it's, I think it's obvious, you know. And, you know, you need the dark side as a balance point, but it's, you know, you don't need it 80, 90% dark and 10% light. No, you need the 50-50. Yeah, absolutely. And balance is everything in the, in the universe. As it is in a car's engine, I mean, everything has to be balanced for everything to run smoothly. And the earth is just unbalanced, wobbling around like a, an engine running on three cylinders, belching smoke and popping and everything like that. And it's like, once we get everything dialed in... It's going to be a smoother ride. You know, then the, yeah. no pollution, the animal world will flourish. We'll be at one, you know, we won't be eating meat anymore. And, um, we won't need to, because you can take bio goo and make it into a steak. <laughs> Apparently it tastes really good. Yeah, I'll look forward to that day. <laughs> well, they're doing it now. They're coming out with, with, with vegetable meat. 3D printed. Yeah. They say it tastes okay. But I'll bet you they'll perfect it within a few years. Well, I, I wish they would because, because being a vegetarian is pretty boring at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want a vegetarian hamburger that yeah. tastes like a hamburger. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, I mean, we've done gene splicing since the history of humanity. We've taken any of the fruits and vegetables we have now. Like, we were talking wild strawberries are not good to eat. And they're tiny, tiny. But, but now we've grown them into these beautiful red giant fruits. And we've done that through history with, with anything like different vegetables and, and fruits and corn. I mean, like we genetically modify everything. Oh, I yeah. grew up on a farm yeah. and uh, the, the things that amaze me about those that GMO stuff is that um, previously the, the farmer would go buy corn, plant it. You have all this stuff. I'm keeping the rest of this to seed the plant for next year. And you put, you, you sell the rest of the market. Now they, they engineer the seeds that you tried to do that. You plant those, they're not growing. Yeah, you have to go back to the because well, they the, need to make money because they need you back buying the new seeds. Exactly. Yeah? Jeez. And they also do things where these like and I learned from the old farmers, you know, next where I grew up, and these, you know, I would see them spray like uh, soybeans. They would spray because bugs would attack all the soybeans, and they would spray all this stuff to kill the bugs. He's like, oh, this is a no spray, or, or he said we could spray. Oh, this is how it was. I'm sorry. He said, we could spray Roundup on this. Why? He's like they genetically modified the plant. That it won't die if you spray Roundup on it, but every other weed or anything else that you spray on it dies. Jeez. So this soybean, when you spray Roundup on it, fine. Anything else around it dies, but because they genetically modified it to be this Roundup, and so like that was in the '90s when I was a kid, learning like learning these things, right? And it's like, well, and they've also generated it where the plants are this tall, and you know before you'd have three or four pods with one or two beans in it, well now it's like three or four beans in it, and they're you know. So they've done all of these things in my, it's by 20, you know, whatever years of knowing it as a kid to now 30 years, whatever. But imagine what they do that we have no idea. Well, we have no idea about it. Yeah, yeah. It's just like. Well, you know, not put that concept to people. Yeah. yeah. Animals, anything. Yeah, anything, yeah. Crazy stuff, man. Well, I mean, that was, they just announced, you know, in the past, what, how many years the CISPR, so you can cut and splice genes. Basically, anybody can do it. Yeah. Computer program. And then there's even labs now that if you can get the, pro the, the program, you can cut and splice whatever and you can send off to a lab and pay them money and they will send you that in the mail and it'll be like oh this is yeah okay was, we created this from whatever with these 15 genes that you wanted here it is and do your experiment gene because modification there's, because there's a little there's little to no regulation there's some but not because it's such a small thing right like that so it's not been a thing should i be afraid of this why the genetics yeah i don't know i mean there's people they're called biohackers and you know because in the hacker community for it stuff i've you know got into but there's biohackers and there's like i think there's a couple documentaries on netflix now where one of the guys died but um, other people have been like well i'm gonna cure my glaucoma or whatever right and they'll splice these genes and they'll get sent in the mail and these guys are literally injecting themselves with these these edited genes and it's know? and it's right, working hey, let's keep on schedule because it's 120 now We've got just enough time to make lunch. We should okay. probably wrap it up, yeah. yeah. And All right. Let's so let's do the blue and crisp. Let's do it. <laughs>
we flew from D.C. to Ohio to hang out with my family so John Luke could see my cars and see another part of America. Oh, but we had a little bit of a delay, and uh, we got stopped by uh, TSA because Warner gave us some awesome solid chocolate guns that looked too real and got confiscated. Like Warner, I love cars too. I don't have as many, but I still have fun with them. And John Luke got to drive my military Hummer. Oh, I feel like we're going into boxing, John. We are. <laughs> the battle for your mind and ufology. Yeah. Hearts and mind. <laughs> Hearts and mind. <coughs> it's doing great, man. Spending a week with John Warner and John Luke made me realize that there are only a few people on the planet that can talk about all the weird shit that we talk about all the time. And I'm super thankful for them. And I'm thankful for you if you sat through this whole entire thing. Special thank you to John and his wife for allowing us to hang out for as long as we did and talk about all the amazing things that we have. Puts everything to perspective. Family, friends, that's what really matters. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> it actually helps. And until the next time, be good to each other.